For over 40 years, the Red Arrows have been thrilling crowds at air shows both across the UK and internationally. They are quite simply the best at what they do. The Red Arrows are a British institution as well as a world-renowned air display team attracting a worldwide following of adoring fans. Officially, the Royal Air Force display team is the public face of the RAF, formally promoting recruitment as well as providing inspiration to significant numbers of those who join the Royal Air Force. Starting out as the Yellow Jacks in the early 60s, the Reds took to the skies in 1965, flying the Folland Nat before transferring to the BAE Hawk Advanced Trainer in 1979. The pilots are renowned for their precision. With such professional excellence, it's little wonder that the Red Arrows never fail to enthrall with their breathtaking displays. Spectators rarely comprehend the tremendous work involved in presenting a Red Arrows display. Although demanding training routines and years of operational flying experience certainly contribute to this magnificent team's continued position as the premier team in the world, the Red Arrow's pole position is not just down to the pilots or their British aircraft. There's a huge support network necessary to maintain their place as the world's top aerobatic display team. This is the story of the Red Arrows. Loved by all, the Red Arrows make complex maneuvers appear simple. Year after year, they perform their complicated close formation aerobatic routines at air shows in the UK and around the globe, always winning a place in the hearts of those who've watched the display. The first air show in the world took place in 1909 in France with pilots entertaining crowds by way of flying demonstrations. Following the First World War, more daring pilots discovered new ways to entertain with wing walking and formation flying. Royal Air Force history is steeped in marvellous formation display teams of one type or another. From the 1920 RAF aerial pageant at Hendon Aerodrome, which featured old biplanes drawn from the frontline squadrons, to the 1938 gladiators tied together at the wingtips, through to the remarkable aerobatic formations of the Red Arrows in their jets of today. The Second World War interrupted the development of formation aerobatics, so it was not until 1947 that the first jet team, comprising of vampires from No. 72 Squadron, took to the skies. Rivalry between the RAF fighter squadrons was high, with each squadron forming its own aerobatic display team. Meteors eventually took over from the Vampires, and 54 Squadron soon moved on to become the first team to use the Hawker Hunter, presenting a four-ship display team in 1955. The Squadron adopted the name the Black Knights in 1956, with the pilots becoming the first to distinguish themselves by wearing black flying suits. Treble One Squadron, known as the Tremblers or Treble One, provided the official RAF aerobatic display team in 1956, flying five Hawker Hunter F-6 fighters. And for the first time, the aircraft bore a special color scheme, an all-black gloss finish, save for the RAF roundels on the wings and fuselage. Following a performance in France, they were dubbed Les Flèches Noires, and therefore were known as the Black Arrows. They became the first team whose display included a formation landing. By the 1957 Farnborough Air Show, the Black Arrows had increased to a nine-ship team, and they certainly created a stir with their nine aircraft formation roll and loop, as this had not been seen since the interwar years.
The following year, the Black Arrows took part in a world record-breaking loop and barrel roll of 22 hunters during the Farnborough Air Show. The greatest number of aircraft ever looped in formation, this remains a world record to this day. In 1960, there was yet another name change, this time to the Pelicans. Named after the bird from the Central Flying School's crest, the Pelicans became the RAF's official team and were soon practicing in Cotswold skies. Also in 1960, number 74 squadron, the Tigers, re-equipped with Lightnings, and in 1961, performed wingovers and rolls with nine aircraft in tight formation. The Black Arrows, however, remained the premier team until 1961, when number 92 squadron, the Blue Diamonds, took over the mantle, introducing some new maneuvers for their 16 blue-painted hunter formation. In 1962, the Tigers became the RAF's premier team. Sometimes the Tigers gave coordinated displays with the Blue Diamonds. Initially, the Pelicans flew four silver and red Jet Provost T-3 aircraft prior to converting to the more powerful Mark IV halfway through the 1962 season. With a top speed of 440 miles per hour, excellent maneuverability, mechanical reliability and low operating costs, the Jet Provost was excellent not only for aerobatic displays but for air warfare and tactical weapons training. For the 1963 season, the team received a new colour scheme of an overall day-glow red. They also changed their name to the Red Pelicans. Number 56 Squadron, the Firebirds, with nine red and silver lightnings, became the official Royal Air Force aerobatic team in 1963. But they disbanded in 1964 due to operational needs. Policies changed and leading display teams in the RAF ceased to be drawn from fighter squadrons, instead being composed of lighter training aircraft in smaller formations as these teams were less expensive to operate and did not interfere with operational requirements. In 1964, the Central Flying School's Red Pelicans assumed the role of the RAF's official leading display team. At the same time, Flight Lieutenant Lee Jones, a former member of the Black Arrows, developed a team flying five Folland Nat T Mark Ones. Adopting the call sign of their leader Yellow Jack, the five ship team rapidly became known as the Yellow Jacks. The RAF has long recognized the added value of display flying for prestige and recruitment, so teams were always encouraged. By 1964, there were so many unofficial display teams that pilots were spending too much time practicing formation aerobatic routines rather than carrying out operational training. The decision was made to form a new full-time professional aerobatic display team to represent the RAF as a whole, drawing the team from a training squadron for ease and cost reduction. The Yellow Jacks leader, Flight Lieutenant Jones, was given this task and the Fallen Nat was chosen as the aircraft for the newly formed team. The Yellow Jacks Nats had been painted red when it became the predominant colour for RAF training aircraft for safety reasons. When asked to suggest a name for the new team to Air Commodore Bird Wilson, Flight Lieutenant Jones said, let it be Red Arrows, red for the colour and arrows in memory of the Black Arrows. The Red Arrows were born. The Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, led by squadron leader Lee Jones, became the official Pan-RAF aerobatic display team for the 1965 display season. Training began in late 1964 with the squadron officially constituted as a Central Flying School unit on the 1st of March 1965.
Initially, the Red Arrows were based at RAF Fairford, with the Central Flying School headquartered 20 miles north at RAF Little Rissington in the Cotswolds. They then moved to RAF Kemble, also in Gloucestershire, remaining there until 1976, when they moved to RAF Cranwell in Lincolnshire. RAF Scampton became a victim of defence cuts and closed in 1995. So the Reds moved to the Royal Air Force College Cranwell again. Today the Red Arrows are once again based at RAF Scampton. They returned there in 2001. The Red Arrows were revealed for the first time on the 6th of May 1965 at RAF Little Rissington near Sirencester in the Cotswolds. A display was laid on to introduce the Royal Air Force aerobatic team to the media. The first display for the public was in France at the French National Air Day in Clermont-Ferrand three days later on the 9th of May 1965. The British public had to wait until the International Airfare at Biggin Hill on the 15th and 16th of May for their first glimpse of the Red Arrows. In their first season, the team had performed 65 displays. At the end of the year, the Red Arrows were awarded the Britannia Trophy by the Royal Aero Club in recognition of their outstanding contribution in the field of aviation. Such was their success, the Royal Air Force decided to continue with the Red Arrows into the 1966 season with a new team leader, Ray Hanna. By mid-1966, two more display pilots had joined the team, making nine formation pilots in total, including the team leader. The first authorised display with nine aircraft on the 8th of July 1966 at RAF Little Rissington was watched by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. Several displays were performed overseas prior to the first nine-ship British display on the 6th of August in Broadie, South Wales. The physical demands of being a Red Arrows pilot are high. During an aerobatic display, the main section of the team regularly experiences around 5 Gs, although this can increase to 7 and occasionally 8 Gs for some manoeuvres. To combat this, Red Arrows pilots wear G suits. This is an elasticated garment which fits tightly over the abdomen and legs and fastens with laces and zips. Attached to the suit are pipes that pump pressurized air into tubes within the suit to help prevent the pilot blacking out when blood rushes away from their head. The pressurized air is proportional to the amount of G being pulled during a maneuver, compressing the pilot's abdomen and legs, thus saving the pilot considerable physical effort.
The Red Arrows pilots undergo a rigorous winter training program. In the early part of the training season, the pilots fly in small groups of four, five or six aircraft. As the pilots gain experience, the number of aircraft in the formation is gradually increased and the base height lowered. Usually by mid-January, weather permitting, the team will be practicing with nine aircraft at display heights. Normally, each pilot, including the leader, stays with the team for three seasons, flying full-time for six months of the year. The team leader always completes a three-year tour in another position within the Red Arrows team and returns to frontline duties before being invited to become team leader. The Red Arrows are divided into sections, Reds 1, 2, 3, four and five form the front section, known as Enid, and named after the late children's author Enid Blyton's famous five stories. Reds six, seven, eight and nine, who are towards the back of the formation, are known as Jippo, and perform some of the fast paced maneuvers in the second half of the Red Arrows display. The Jippo section name comes from the nickname of a Red Six pilot who possibly led the Jippo formation in the late 1960s, but there are no official records to confirm this. The display routine has been designed to keep the crowd's attention and is divided into two distinctive segments, lasting in total about 20 minutes. The first half of the display consists of aerobatic maneuvers performed by all nine aircraft flying a variety of different shapes. Reds 6 and 7, the synchronized or synchro pair, spend most of the first half of the display astern of the leader, forming what's called the stem, which can generally be easier positions for most of the early formation shapes. Then in the second half of the display, Reds 6 and 7 split off from the other seven aircraft to perform the heart-stopping crosses and other amazing solo maneuvers. The synchro pair must trust each other implicitly in order to perform crossovers just a few feet apart at such high speeds. Only one synchro partner is authorized to take avoidance action. The other must not divert from their course no matter what. The synchro pair also experience more gravitational pull than any other red arrows. One of the key roles of the synchro pair is to provide excitement and a distraction in front of the crowd whilst the team leader is repositioning the remaining aircraft for their next fly pass. Red 6, the synchro leader, is selected from the most experienced third year pilots and is allowed to choose synchro 2, Red 7, who then goes on to become synchro leader the following year. The Reds aircraft fly as low as just 300 feet above the ground at times. But the synchro pair, who perform some of the most breathtaking aerobatics, are allowed to fly as low as just 100 feet in straight and level flight. There's one other essential Red Arrows pilot, Red 10, the team's road manager and commentator when they're displaying. Red 10 flies the 10th Hawk, which also serves as a reserve aircraft in case one of the others becomes unserviceable when away from base. Red 10 also acts as a ground safety officer during the display season and is tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that ground conditions are suitable before the displays begin. The team manager also provides the commentary for the team at air displays during Red Arrow's performances.
All pilots undertake a rigorous annual examination by the RAF Central Flying School and fly regular sorties in flight simulators to test emergency handling and procedures. Every sortie flown by the team is videoed by the photographic team for flight safety and debriefing purposes. The photographic section consists of two RAF photographers trained in both video and stills photography. The Red Arrows fly whichever aircraft is in service as the RAF's advanced jet trainer. They took delivery of the BAE Systems T-1 Hawk trainer in the autumn of 1979. During that winter, the pilots converted from the NAT and worked up a display using the new aeroplane in time for the 1980 display season. The Reds deployed to Cyprus for intensive practice sessions for the first time in the spring. Of the 13 Hawk aircraft currently operated by the Red Arrows, six are classified as founder aircraft and have been used by the team every year since the Hawk was introduced for formation flying. The Hawk aircraft are essentially the same single-engined, two-seat advanced fast jet trainer as those flown by advanced flying training students at RAF Valley with the exception of the smoke generation modifications and slightly uprated engine giving faster throttle response times. Powered by a Rolls-Royce Ardor engine which delivers a maximum speed of 640 miles per hour, the Hawk is 11.35 meters in length with a wingspan of almost 10 meters. Empty, the aircraft weighs just 4,450 kilograms. Safety is paramount and the Hawk has a number of built-in features, including comprehensive backup systems which can be engaged if the primary system ceases to function. Additionally, the cockpit is fitted with a fully automatic Martin Baker Mark 10B rocket-assisted ejection seat suited to escape at all altitudes and speeds. Since the Red Arrow's introduction to the Hawk, the team has toured Eastern and Western Europe, the USA, the Middle and Far East, Africa and Australia. In all, the Red Arrows have now notched up displays in 53 countries. Through their international displays, the RAF Aerobatic Display Team has supported wider British interests through the promotion of British industry overseas. The additional costs of sending the Red Arrows on overseas tours are often entirely borne by British companies. The Ministry of Defence takes the view that British taxpayers should not bear the cost of these international tours. The Red Arrows team is comprised of much more than nine pilots and the team manager commentator we see and hear it displays. The Royal Air Force aerobatic team actually consists of 101 personnel, including pilots, engineers and support staff. Generally, about 40 people need to travel in support roles, including two engineering officers, an adjutant and a public relations officer, the only civilian on the team. About 25 engineers are designated as first line and are responsible for servicing the aircraft away from base. The second line, consisting mostly of ground technicians and administrative staff, undertake in-depth maintenance at Royal Air Force Scampton. They're known collectively as the Blues. A very elite group from the first line team, comprising of the first junior officer and nine technicians, is called the Circus. The Circus fly in the rear seats of the Hawk aircraft to display locations so that essential servicing can begin before the main support team arrives and after each display. 
They also prepare the pilot's flying kit. The overall responsibility for the management of the Blues falls to the senior and junior engineering officers with both commissioned officers spending a two-year tour with the Red Arrows. The senior engineering officer manages the Red Arrows 13 aircraft on a long-term basis, whereas the junior engineering officer ensures that day-to-day -day flying operations run smoothly. Although the Hawk maintenance requirements are relatively simple, particularly in comparison to the RAF's frontline fighters, technicians in the propulsion, airframe, electrical, weapons and avionics trades are essential to keep the aircraft flying. The coloured smoke produced by the Red Arrows is in fact vapour. Interestingly enough, the main purpose of the smoke is flight safety. The smoke gives the team leader an indication of wind speed and direction more clearly than other means and also helps with queuing when the aircraft are a large distance apart, often by several miles. Being decorative is a large bonus for the crowds assembled to watch. The vapour trails come from an additional fuel pod in the underside of the fuselage. At the back of the aircraft, immediately above the jet exhaust pipe, there are three small tubes, through which the pilot can pump small quantities of this diesel. When the diesel meets the extremely high temperatures found in the jet exhaust, over 500 degrees Celsius, the diesel immediately vaporizes, creating an intense white cloud. With separate switches in the control column, the pilot can add red or blue dye to the diesel and produce the other two colors. In any one display, each jet carries enough fuel to produce seven minutes worth of smoke, five minutes of white smoke and one minute each of red and blue. For this reason, a smoke plot is worked out extremely carefully during winter training by the team's executive officer to ensure that no aircraft runs out of smoke before the end of the display. The diesel and dyes are replaced by a team of four people called the dye team in two separate operations. The most crucial piece of equipment to the team's work is the dye rig, which contains the dye-diesel mixture. Every display uses up one barrel of red dye and one of blue dye which are then topped up with diesel. The dyes are always added in the same order so as not to get them mixed up, red then blue. All Red Arrows pilots are, and always have been, volunteers. Most will tell you that it's a job they always wanted to do, sometimes from a very early age. Around 30 pilots apply to join the team each year. In January, the RAF asks for volunteers from suitably qualified pilots. To be eligible, applicants must have completed at least one operational tour on a fast jet and have been assessed in their annual reports as being above average in their operational role. Many of the pilots have been involved in frontline operations in war zones such as Iraq and Afghanistan. As if that wasn't enough, prospective Red Arrows pilots need a minimum of 1,500 operational flying hours in a fast jet. The current pilots all flew the Tornado F3 or GR4, Harrier G7 or Jaguar GR3 before joining the team. Volunteers are usually mentally agile flight lieutenants in their late 20s or early 30s with lightning reflexes, perfect vision, stamina and superb hand-eye coordination. With far more volunteers than places available, a paper pre-selection board reduces the number to a shortlist of about nine. These potential display pilots are then attached to the Red Arrows for a week in March or April during the Red Spring training exercise at Royal Air Force Akrotiri in Cyprus. By this stage, the shortlisted pilots are deemed to be professionally capable of flying to the required standard, so the volunteers are being assessed more on their personal qualities and motivation. The new pilots are also put through a series of rigorous tests, including interviews, flying tests, as well as other assessments. It's vitally important that the nine display pilots spend time with the potential recruits to ensure that they get along well and can build trust in each other's skills. The potential Red Arrows team members also have an opportunity to fly in the back seat of the Hawks during display practices. The final decision about the new Red Arrows pilots is made at a closed meeting of current pilots, chaired by the Commandant of the Central Flying School. 
with the new pilots joining the team in September so that they can fly in the back seats with the team for the last few displays of the season. Once back on the ground, each sortie is discussed in minute detail and the debrief and the video footage is examined. Whether the Reds are flying practices or displays, for each flight there's also a lot of flight planning and general paperwork. As if that's not enough, the Red Arrows are a squadron and have other responsibilities to make sure the squadron runs effectively. The flight line at Scampton is extremely busy during the winter months when the pilots fly three times a day, five days a week. The team starts flying in small formations of three or four aircraft to enable the new pilots to learn the flying references and formation shapes. The team slowly develop the display sequences. It takes seven months of relentless hard work to develop an outstanding display by the Red Arrows. The nine formation is not generally flown until February of the following year, five months after training began. The Red Arrows visit Cyprus every spring. Called Springhawk since 1985, this detachment enables the pilots to practice in guaranteed good weather for a concentrated period before training is completed in May, when the Commander-in-Chief makes an assessment of the Red Arrow's safety and professionalism. If approved, public display authority is awarded, meaning the Red Arrows can display in public. Red Arrows pilots can only wear their red flying suits when the PDA has been awarded and the pilots are fully qualified. During training, all the Reds pilots wear green flying suits. The Red Arrows have found that a three-year rotation achieves the optimum experience levels within the team, with three first-year pilots, three second-year pilots and three in their final year. In their first year, pilots start off at the front of the formation, flying as red, two, three or four. As they get more experience in their second and third years, they move down the formation to the other positions. At the end of their time with the Red Arrows, pilots usually return to frontline RAF squadrons, instructional or staff duties. Some pilots opt to leave the RAF if their contract is complete. The highest number of displays flown in any one calendar year was 136 in 1995, including an autumn tour of Africa, the Middle East and the Far East. The lowest number of displays flown in a season was in 1975, when the worldwide fuel crisis meant that the Red Arrows flew on 56 displays. 1974 had also been a poor year. As long as the weather is within limits for a formation of nine aircraft, there are three types of display. The leader can choose to fly the full display, the rolling display and the flat display. To carry out a full looping display, the base of the cloud must be above 4,500 feet to avoid the aircraft entering the cloud at the top of the loop. If the cloud base is less than 4,500 feet but more than 2,500 feet, the Red Arrows will perform the rolling display, substituting wing overs and rolls for the loops. However, if the cloud base is less than 2,500 feet, the team will fly the flat display, which consists of a series of fly paths and steep turns. The base height of the display cannot be adjusted to compensate for poor weather conditions. However, when the weather is bad, people on the ground sometimes get the impression that the aircraft are flying lower than normal. Low cloud reflects the aircraft noise downwards, making the display seem noisier and similarly, a low cloud base can give the impression that the aircraft are flying lower than normal. The Red Arrows fly a number of aerobatic maneuvers during their displays. These maneuvers can be divided into categories with titles such as tight, long, wide, line abreast and gap formations, depending on the position of the team members within the group. Probably the best way to understand the careful planning of a Red Arrows display is to be guided through the manoeuvres and formations by Red One. I can actually see the guys. Most of the time I can't see the wingmen, uh, but for the wine glass roll I can actually see the chaps either side of me uh, quite clearly. And as I bottom the loop, I'll roll call rolling out and then I call for the synchro pair to split and we complete what we call the leader's benefit loop. And 
And this is where the manager comes in because he has to draw his attention, their, everyone's attention to the synchro pair. We come in each time from left and right. Normally their closing speed is something somewhere between six and six and seven hundred uh, miles an hour, and they're pulling anywhere up to four or five g. What happens in this particular one is that number six will fly the manoeuvre, uh, and number number seven will fly the same manoeuvre and miss him. Uh, and obviously red six never takes avoiding action; it's always up to seven. And uh, when they get into position, then they tell me that they're all aboard and I call for the smoke to go off. And we're running just behind the crowd, I call for the smoke to come on. Uh, and then as we start our pull up, just before I pull up, I'll call pulling up. And then when we get to about 30 degrees of nose up, I'll call uh, for the change, first formation change into diamond. Over the top of the loop, I throttle back a little bit and bend the loop to the right, as you can see there before reversing left, and I'll tell everybody what I'm doing. So at this stage it would be go reversing left now, and then we're in a, into a, something like a 4G turn all the way around the corner. This sort of uh, speed at the moment, we're probably doing about 330 knots, something like that. And at, the, at this stage here, I'm just f feeling the turn to try and get the apex of the turn uh, right in front of the crowd. In a typical aerobatic display, the red arrows fly an average of 20 different formations. These formations are each given names based loosely upon the shape created, or named after other aircraft. The corkscrew is quite a simple manoeuvre to fly badly, but very difficult to fly accurately. The highest point of the roll should be as far above the starting height as the lowest is below and the entire roll should be orientated along a straight line, the axis of the barrel. Red 7 rolls around red 6, 8 and 9, a manoeuvre called the corkscrew. The full aerobatic barrel roll is a combination of a roll and a loop and is probably best compared to the corkscrew. In order to maintain position relative to the leader, the pilot on the outside has to fly faster than the leader and the pilot on the inside has to fly slower than the leader. The Red Arrow's barrel rolls are less pronounced than the conventional barrel roll, with the pilot or team keeping the aircraft in generally the same direction throughout the manoeuvre. If you watch carefully, you'll see that the Red Arrow's always roll to the left, meaning that as the roll starts, the leader's aircraft will roll anti-clockwise. Tight formations are the smaller ones, where the aircraft fly particularly close together whilst holding a tight formation. The reds tend to include one or two of these formations in their displays. These formations are flown to demonstrate the skill of the pilots flying in formation, so the red arrows tend to use these manoeuvres to show how well they can hold a position during a single manoeuvre, such as a bend or a roll. Two of the tightest formations are the short diamond and the Apollo, where the aircraft are only six feet apart. It's not just a simple case of flying either. Pilots have to rapidly perform complex trigonometry calculations when in flight. There are no computers to aid the aerial maneuvers when flying at 400 miles per hour whilst trying to keep within a hair's breadth of the formation. Pilots pick reference points on the aircraft next to them and rigorously stick to these, staying within just 18 inches of the formation. 
and all this whilst experiencing huge gravitational stresses against their bodies. The Diamond 9 is the Red Arrow's signature manoeuvre and features in the displays every year. The Diamond 9 is a compact formation like the Feathered Arrow, the Shuttle, Tornado and the Vixen. Notice how symmetrical the left and right hand sides are and the even spacing of the aircraft lengthwise. The Diamond is almost exclusively flown in a bend and is used as a logical step between other formations. For example, between a line abreast formation and a long formation. The Gripen, named after the Swedish fighter aircraft. Similar to the kite, but with a hole in the middle, the Gripen formation does look like its namesake. A variation on the diamond, the Gripen provides a useful bridge to maneuvers such as the Apollo. The logic of the numbering is the same for all the formations, with even numbers on the right, odd numbers on the left. The lower numbers, less experienced in the team, are towards the front. Gap formations are the ones where it looks like an aircraft's missing, where you could expect a tenth aircraft to slot in. These formations are the smaller ones, where the focus is on extremely careful station keeping and holding a very tight formation. Generally, these formations are flown to demonstrate the skill of flying in formation rather than high-speed maneuvers, so are used to show how well a position can be held during an aerobatic maneuver like a bend or roll. Thank you. 
Long formations are the formations where three or four of the Hawk aircraft are in trailing lines either side of the central stem of Red 6 and 7. The wingmen end up quite some distance from the team leader, making these formations more difficult. Long formations are part of each season's display. It's impossible to introduce variety to the display without including at least two, and they're frequently looped and rolled. Long formations include the Swan and Concorde, which is named after the Anglo-French supersonic aircraft and is typically used in a bend manoeuvre. Line abreast formations are where three, four or five aircraft are side by side. This type of formation is a particularly good way of judging how accurately the aircraft are being flown, as this is a difficult aerobatic maneuver to perform. The references that pilots usually use in order to judge how far apart they are and to determine if they're in the correct position are harder to identify. At least one line abreast formation is included every year. The Apollo is an extremely versatile maneuver. Named after NASA's series of spacecraft, the Apollo is one of the oldest formation shapes flown by the team and one of the most regularly used because of its flexibility. For this formation, the Hawks are only six feet apart. The Apollo is an excellent transitional maneuver, often being used to change from the Diamond, Typhoon or Eagle maneuvers. The delta is a line abreast maneuver which is used in a rolling formation. It's sometimes combined with a little added panache, such as a right hand turn. The team members have their own position within each formation and they all follow the leader. Red 6 probably has the easiest job in this formation as they fly mainly in line astern and directly behind Red 1. The situation is a little more complicated for Reds 4, 5, 7, 8 and 9 who each have other aircraft between them and Red 1. If one of the pilots goes sick during the display season, or for any other reason is not able to fly, the team is able to fly an eight-ship formation. When flying with one aircraft less, the team leader adjusts the position of the other pilots to achieve the most pleasing visual effect, and various missing men formations are practiced during the winter training period. If the team leader, Red 1, is unable to fly, then the team does not display at all.
There is naturally an element of danger in any form of flying, but the type of flying carried out by the Red Arrows is not dangerous in itself. Besides, the pilots are amongst the most highly qualified and experienced within the Royal Air Force. The Red Arrows have an excellent safety record, particularly considering the number of years the team has existed and the collective hours flown, both on display and during training. Of course, there have been a few incidents, aside from the two Nats crashing in 1969. One of the worst accidents was in 1987, when two Red Arrows Hawks were involved in a mid-air collision and crashed into a house in Welton, Lincolnshire during a training sortie. Miraculously, nobody was killed. Other mishaps include a hawk hitting a yacht mast at an air show in Sussex in 1980. The pilot ejected safely. A hawk rammed another on a runway in 1986 and one of the jets veered off the runway at Jersey Airport in 2003. In 2007, the wingtip of one jet hit the tail of another during a practice flight near RAF Scampton when one of the pilots carried out an incorrect manoeuvre. Most recently, in March 2009, a report by the Air Safety Board showed how the quick thinking of a Red Arrow squadron leader prevented a catastrophe in the air. Returning from a display at Western Supermare to Bristol Airport in August 2008, the nine Hawk jets narrowly avoided a Boeing 737. Air traffic controllers had failed to inform the Red Arrows team that the 737 would be crossing their path and asked them to climb to the same altitude of 2,500 feet. Fortunately, the Red Arrows leader spotted the airliner through thick cloud and told the rest of his team to level off. The jet then passed some 270 meters above the squadron. The Air Safety Board praised the squadron leader, believing that his swift action averted any major crisis. The Red Arrows unveiled a new paint scheme in October 2007, prior to the departure for the Middle East in the November. Aside from a stylized wired A, there's little discernible difference between the old and new markings. However, online fans and enthusiasts have expressed their dislike for the first change to the world-famous design since the Red Arrows took delivery of the Hawk aircraft in 1979. Rumours abounded at one point that the Red Arrows could be disbanded due to Ministry of Defence cutbacks. The speculation became so serious in 2007 that the then Prime Minister, Tony Blair, in response to a 57,000-strong e-petition on the Downing Street website, issued a statement reading the government recognizes the important role the Red Arrows play in our national life. As the world's premier aerobatic team, they've thrilled millions of spectators over many years. As more and more female Royal Air Force pilots become eligible for selection, it's inevitable that there will be a female Red Arrows pilot one day soon. One of only 10 female pilots in the entire Royal Air Force made it through to the elite group of nine volunteers competing to fill the three vacancies for the 2010 season. Two thousand and eight saw a British woman, Julie Hasselden, bid one point five million pounds in a Help for Heroes charity auction for the once in a lifetime opportunity to fly in the Red Arrows Hawks. Julie and eight friends join a very small group able to experience the Reds from the passenger seat during a flight. Displayed on the Red Arrow's crest, along with their trademark Diamond 9 formation, is their motto, Eclat, meaning brilliance or excellence. The Red Arrows certainly fulfill this. Without doubt, the Red Arrows, through the many displays they perform each year, have become a household name, with virtually no one not knowing who or what the Red Arrows are. 
a significant part of British tradition, iconic perhaps. Some bright spark calculated that a Red Arrows pilot experiences the equivalent energy expenditure as working an eight-hour day in one display, and sometimes the Red Arrows undertake as many as three full displays in a single day. Red Arrows are one of the country's greatest ambassadors when they travel abroad, but they remain a small part of a larger organization, the Royal Air Force, much of which is currently engaged on operations overseas defending UK interests. Long may the Red Arrows provide enjoyment for future generations through their breathtaking aerobatics and retain their position as the world's premier aerobatic display team.